So Hell's Kitchen Season 23 is coming back on September 26th. And from the promo, it looks like this time the battle is only gonna be between the head chefs. Now when it comes to the show, there's nothing more painful to watch than a team that's just not clicking. You know the type. No talent, no chemistry, and definitely no clue. For this video, I'm gonna focus on the only team that couldn't win a single dinner service against their rivals. Can you believe it? They faced Ramsey's wrath every episode to the point he chased them down the kitchen. Out! Get out! Get out! Shioban concurred and blamed it on awful communication. Nilka blamed it on their nerves. Speaking about drama, Holly said, and I quote, I just tried to stay out of it. I'm not used to being around so many women. In the kitchens I've worked in, I'm pretty much the only woman. I had all these men working for me that were old enough to be my father, and that's what I'm used to. Being around all that estrogen was really tough. In contrast, Fran said, it was as bad as they portrayed us on TV. We bonded, but reality checked her when Ramsey had to remind her of the act when Stacy finally brought the scallops up to the pass. They were a disaster. Next order of business, Fran attempted to serve her beautiful potatoes, but Ramsey quickly noticed. Unfucking believable. Fran was frantic. The potatoes were either overcooked or too small. It wasn't clear. When he asked Fran how long it would take to get new potatoes ready, she didn't respond. Holly tried to help by asking her again, and Fran finally yelled out, two minutes. But the whole situation just highlighted the lack of communication going on. Much to Ramsey's frustration, Fran didn't want to abandon her team and hesitated. But Ramsey made his intentions clear. Arms, seething with anger, Jamie, in a fit of frustration, took her anger out on a punching bag. Meanwhile, Ramsey ordered Jean-Philippe to bring Nilka back to the kitchen and stationed her with Siobhan on meat. Back in the dorm, Jamie, on the other hand, didn't hold out much hope or confidence in her team. I guess they're not completing. Now, coming to the third service, Maria sent her first attempt at risotto to the pass, but it was both overcooked and lacking in seasoning. Not enough blobs in there, yeah? Okay, not enough fucking mascarpone cheese in there. She confessed that she hadn't really cooked much risotto before, which makes me question why did her team not brainstorm this before service and put someone else who was acquainted with risotto on that station instead? Her second try didn't fare much better. It was still overcooked and even stuck to the plates. Now I've got stodge on the plate again. Ah, I'm warning you now. Meanwhile, Holly had to return a dish that was supposed to be medium rare, but was served rare. Ramsey accepted the dish back and immediately told Fran to refire a medium rare steak urgently. Autumn tried to remind Fran what she needed to refire, but Fran, already feeling the heat with Ramsey watching her every move, said she needed to be extra careful, especially with her injured hand. As Siobhan was ready to send her fish to the pass, she asked for a time update and Ramsey made sure to remind Fran that the beef had to be medium. But when Fran finally sent the beef up, it was raw. It's a little rare. I requested it what? Medium. medium. Rare. So Ramsey didn't hold back in schooling Fran on her mistake and then ordered the entire team to start the whole table over from scratch. Three hours into service, Holly tried to lighten the mood with some unhappy customers by jokingly offering more bread but they weren't having it. Yeah. I can get you more bread. Meanwhile, in the red kitchen, Ramsey was far from impressed with Jamie's mashed potatoes, which were burned beyond recognition. His frustration only grew when Jamie tried to justify the mess. That's burnt then it's there. Then. What's that there? Then it's scorched shear shop. Now, this is when Siobhan saw Jamie struggling and figured she needed help, so she decided to take over Jamie's station. But Ramsey wasn't thrilled with this idea and made it clear that Jamie should handle her own station. As if things weren't bad enough, the carrots started burning. When Ramsey asked for an explanation, Jamie didn't have much to say except that it wouldn't happen again and threw in a snarky comment about how he was all over her case, but not in a good way. How can we burn a carrot? Chef, I turn. 
Oh. I'm not going to say anything. The kitchen continued to unravel when Siobhan sent up her halibut, which turned out to be raw. Ramsey gave her a piece of his mind, pointing out that she'd taken over Jamie's station while failing to cook her own dishes properly. So, Siobhan had no choice but to start over. Jamie, That's my they fault. touch fucking that! So you waste all this time! Fran sent her beef out of the red kitchen, but instead of the requested medium rare, it came out medium, which didn't exactly win her any points with Ramsay. When she mentioned she might have another piece of beef ready, Ramsay's frustration only deepened. Get me out of here! Nilka didn't hold back either. She pointed out that Fran's inability to get the temperatures right messed up the entire team. Nilka added that Fran's nerves clearly got the best of her, which led to everything being sent back. She let her nerves get in the way. I can't send it as a refire overcook now. Yes, sir. I'm the cook overcook. But that wasn't the end of it. Things went from bad to worse when Ramsay asked for a perfectly cooked steak. Fran, in the middle of her scramble, stuck her hand in the oven, and the pain from her burn quickly became unbearable. Straight face. She's burnt. Where did you burn that? They can't look at it. Put yourself together. Autumn, trying to be helpful, suggested she see a medic, but Fran was stubborn and refused to leave the kitchen or show her injury to the other teammates. When Autumn kept pushing to check her hand, Fran snapped at her, telling her to back off. I am fine. Okay, you're, you're burnt, Fran. Let me see it. No, let me see it. Just, Just shut your fucking mouth and don't. Despite Fran's aggressive response, Autumn didn't give up. I guess she was the one sane teammate here. Eventually, Maria and Nilka stepped in, telling Autumn to drop it and leave Fran alone. Don't. Leave Let me see. Leave, leave her alone. Leave her alone. Stop the battle. Let's go. Stop. I mean, she was just trying to help because you were no good with a healthy working hand. God knows how you'd be with a burnt one. Autumn, however, couldn't let it go and ended up telling sous chef Andy about Fran's burn. Andy passed the message along to Ramsey, who promptly called Fran over to check out the injury. Show me your hands. Oh, that's a serious burn. Reluctantly, she left the kitchen, her emotions running high. While with the medic, Fran admitted she didn't care if her hand fell off. She just wanted to keep cooking. The medic applied some lotion, but you could tell Fran's mind was still in the kitchen. I don't care if my hand falls off. I, I just want to finish. Let me know if it stinks too bad. I think it's worse there. There's a very thin line between stupidity and bravado, you know. Meanwhile, back in the red kitchen, Maria and Nilka tried to cover for Fran on the meat station. But when Maria couldn't figure out what temperature the beef needed to be, Ramsey's disappointment was palpable. Temp on the meat. Temp on the beef? I don't know. Oh, jeez. Look at the state of... After getting a bandage on her hand, Fran made her way back to the kitchen. But what happened next was even worse. Four hours into the service, both teams managed to pull themselves together to finish the remaining tickets. But Fran was on edge, knowing full well she could easily become the main target for her teammates' blame if things went south. And if they think... I should be the easy out because of this. Come on, give me a break. And she would have deserved it. Anyway, the red team lost. Yes, we completed service. But does it have to be this painful? As they headed back to the dorms, Nilka was fuming over yet another loss, grumbling about how much it sucked. On the patio, Holly chimed in saying that the meat station was what really dragged them down in the kitchen. Autumn also admitted that all the meat refires were what ultimately sank them, and Fran owned up to not telling anyone about her injury, which had contributed to the mess. When it came time to choose nominees, Nilka was quick to point the finger at Fran as the obvious first choice. However, she got hung up on who should be the second nominee. Siobhan then threw out the idea. One for elimination. It's a choice between Maria for the risotto or Jamie. Jamie, feeling the heat, wasn't happy about being in the mix. She argued that she didn't perform second worst, insisting she had it under control. Even worse today, I started getting in the weeds and it was hard for me to recover. But Maria wasn't having any of it, snapping back with a distasteful remark. I got it. I was like, listen, the only thing you have is an excess amount of weight. Body shaming your teammate. Let's go. That's healthy camaraderie. Feeling cornered, Jamie then suggested Maria should be the nominee, which only made Maria angrier. She demanded to know why she should be on the chopping block 
pointing out that she at least got the team started. Despite Jamie's protests, she still refused to believe she did second worst. For anything, plain and simple, nothing. Risottos, I know Chef was sending them back. The team found themselves stuck in a stalemate, unable to agree on who should join Fran as the second nominee. Ultimately, it was... Jamie as well. And what do you know? She was eliminated over Fran. Can you believe it? And the reason? A big team player. That much of a team player that you hand your section over to Javon. Fran had to be rescued on her station too. Jamie in an interview to Ant Foodie magazine said, Once you're nominated, you feel emotionally raped. What you didn't see on the show was that I was a workhorse that helped everyone out. I would quiz everyone on the ingredients of the dishes until they knew it. I would prep more stuff than a lot of people. But it is what it is. And I hold no grudge. Oh, I it. Autumn was being her bitchy drama queen self and threw me under the bus. I must have smoked 10 cigarettes in a row after that night. So, what do you think about it? See, Fran definitely overstayed her welcome by a mile. Fran was saved by luck more times than anyone could count. Whether it was Stacy being completely useless in the kitchen, Jamie throwing in the way, the towel on her station during the final service, Scott's jaw-dropping incompetence, Sal getting a free pass because his team won, or Siobhan being too timid and inconsistent to put up a fight. Honestly, I still think Siobhan should have stayed over her. She only had one decent service, and that was it. And even then, she didn't hesitate to exploit her position as the best of the worst by trying to nominate Nilka, all because Scott whispered it in her ear. But wait, as always, I save the best for the last, because here comes the most embarrassing service of the season. I have never, ever witnessed such a disastrous service. In the eighth episode, the men won the Gourmet Sandwich Challenge and were rewarded with a day at the California Central Wine Country for a wine tasting. When the blue team stumbled back from their reward, Nilka noticed their state of inebriation. Ed was spinning around the room in a dance that could only be described as drunk choreography. And, well, Jay's head swayed so much it seemed like it was on a swivel. You gotta be drunk. He must be, because I have never seen him like that. Oh Fran, trying to gauge their mood, asked if they were happy. Jay's response was barely coherent. He simply couldn't manage a full Excuse me, I just have to know, are you happy? Fran pointed out that their inability to speak clearly was a sign of just how intoxicated they were, and joked that she hoped they'd suffer from hangovers the next day. She mused that a hangover would give the red team a nice advantage. Sure enough, the next day unfolded as Fran had predicted. The red team, fresh and well-rested, was primed and ready to tackle the upcoming service. Meanwhile, the blue team was still battling their hangovers. It should have been a cakewalk for the red team, but they somehow managed to blow their chance. When Ramsay announced the first order in the red kitchen, Fran confessed she had never made risotto before, but felt comfortable handling the rest of her station. Holly, however, was on edge, realizing their chances of success were on thin ice if they didn't nail this. Fran's first attempt at risotto came out looking promising, earning a nod of approval from Siobhan for its good timing. But she was known for being inconsistent, and just like clockwork, things took a nosedive when she served a raw risotto. Ramsay didn't have it, and let Fran know she had messed up by forgetting several crucial steps. What's the next? Rice is crunchy, no fucking seasoning, and it's watery. Fran? clearly frustrated, expressed her irritation, only to be met with Ramsay's colorful metaphor. Damn it, I'm so aggravated. You're about as fucking consistent as pigeon shit on Trafalgar Square. Well, that's Ramsay at his creative best. Anyway, Siobhan had to send back a batch of scallops because they weren't up to scratch. Ramsay found an entire order of overcooked scallops, which were clearly a mess. Siobhan argued, claiming the scallops looked fine to her. Holly, on the other hand, could see they were burnt to a crisp. Despite the obvious issues, Siobhan insisted the scallops were acceptable, which really set Ramsay off. Take that, yeah. There are some on here that were fine, chef. Yeah, not exactly a clever move. That's when Nilka suggested that Siobhan should zip it before Ramsay got even more aggressive. Keep your mouth shut, yes, chef, and cook. Well, exactly. And nope, Ramsay didn't hold back. 
He spelled out exactly what was wrong with the scallops, but he wasn't done yet. He then banished her from the kitchen. She was sent to the dining room, where she had to face the consequences of her mistakes firsthand. Siobhan returned to the kitchen and admitted she had botched the scallops. Benjamin, busy with the next order of scallops, was not thrilled to see her trying to reclaim her station. He insisted that Siobhan stick to desserts, which she agreed to with clear reluctance. But Siobhan, still eager to pitch in, found Benjamin's patience wearing thin. He brusquely shoved her aside, grabbing the scallops from her hands. Moments later, he snapped at her, demanding she vacate his station immediately. I seasoned them for you. Where's my scallops over here? I have scallops in a fucking... The whole situation was a disaster in teamwork. Instead of cooperating and covering for each other, they turned the kitchen into a battleground. Siobhan's attempt to help only escalated Benjamin's irritation, resulting in a chaotic exchange where collaboration was clearly off the menu. Ben pushed me out of the way and I was really, really pissed off because you know what, he has no heart. Nilka had chopped her chicken and delivered it to the pass with Holly's garnish. Unfortunately, the chicken was still raw. Ramsey, clearly irked, slammed the chicken down with his hand. Raw, and you were look, not even cooked. Raw, raw, raw. Holly remarked that she had noticed the chicken was raw when she sliced it and emphasized that serving raw chicken was simply unacceptable. Ramsey scolded Nilka for not mentioning the issue earlier, leaving Nilka frustrated with herself for causing such a mess. Hey, you can't just do that! My chicken's raw! You're right! Meanwhile, Fran served a salad and a, a bit of this as well. I can't even get a fucking salad dress that looks not even dressed look. Benjamin commented that Fran seemed to be talking a lot, despite not cooking well. Ramsey instructed her to properly dress the salad, but when Fran sent out a risotto, it was also raw. The glaring inconsistencies made Ramsey angry. So, taste the rice. Up and down, up and down, up and fucking down. He then dismissed the red team from the kitchen clearly fed up with their performance. Again? You, 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 and him. Honestly, have you witnessed a team as pathetic as them? Sure, there were less rivalries and bitchiness as compared to, say, Seasons 9 and 10 red teams, but talent-wise, Season 7 red teams sucked the most. Now, a dishonorable mention goes to Season 8, Episode 11. It was a train wreck of a service, but oh. Nomar Garcia Pera and Mia Hamm were among the guests. Tell me on the outside, but on the inside, I'm one Gengayo! Despite Trev's confidence in his skills. Luckily, I rock on appetizers. I'm the king of lobster spaghetti. Ramsey rejected his lobster spaghetti for overcooked pasta. Stupid! Disgusting. It was the first table, and everybody tanked. Oh. Ramsey then pulled him and Sabrina aside, cautioning them sharply to wake up and cease their arguments. Uh -huh. Their dysfunctional teamwork led to a backlog of orders. To the pack. It eventually prompted Ramsey to direct Nona to start serving the steak Diane immediately, but she then sent out a salad without dressing. Question. How in the hell does the salad come back? More dress. No! Yes! With Trev's assistance, Sabrina managed to get her redo accepted. Trev has successfully tossed Sabrina's salads. Yeah, I like Very it. good. I mean, tossing the salads might be the only thing they did successfully that night. Do you agree? Make sure to let me know. And well, if you thought this video was crazy, then don't forget to check out the next one right here. It's even better.